as it relates to that of what you would know as the human experiment, that yes, your genome does indeed include the DNA splicing, the DNA specifications relating to that of 22 different humanoid extraterrestrial races. Now, these particular forms of, shall we say, donators and contributors have been here since the very beginning of the inception of the human experiment. Again, understand that your planet was specifically chosen for this new accord. Simply because the idea of the human race has been fragmented for a very long time. Again, if we were able to go back into the ancient roots pertaining to that of the Lyra constellation, that through a great deal of war, much of the particular original seed that represented the humanoid genome, other particular sub-races, other species, other civilizations became separated through the polarity of skirmish of war together. Earth, again, is what you would refer to as third time's a charm. But Earth was meant to, in that sense, become more heavily guarded as the two previous experiments relating to Maldek and relating to Mars did not succeed. And because they did not succeed, then there has been, in that sense, a great deal of, shall we say, cosmic rules, or shall we say, ground rules pertaining to the game masters who wanted to bring about a much more deeper experiment with the Earth. Now, understand that the planet themselves decides the experiment. They are basically the landscape, and they must decide exactly what is to come upon their surface. The Earth herself requested the idea of having a very advanced, universally designed human upon her surface, simply because that was her compatibility factor. Now, Earth herself has gone through a great deal of turmoil karmically throughout millions and millions and millions and millions of years. Throughout the idea of warring civilizations that attempted to fight over the earth to claim her as property. But when this particular form of claimancy reached a stalemate, these particular beings that represented the game masters, that you may also refer to as Argothans in that particular way, were basically the catalysts to allowing volunteers of different humanoid races to come forward and contribute their DNA to the integration of the human genome. Think of it very similar to the idea of a jigsaw puzzle, that a jigsaw puzzle has a specific piece in order for the jigsaw puzzle picture to be completed. And this is basically what needed to happen pertaining to the DNA splicing and the DNA integration between yourselves. And it was through this idea of the full, raw, untapped state of the genetic splicing that represented you to functioning together as a 12 DNA helix genetic structure. Now, again, understand that over time throughout the civilizations, humanity needed to be, shall we say, greatly restricted in regards to certain forms of increments of DNA simply because of the idea of polarized conflict. Again, looking in regards to what happened with your Atlantis is basically why this has taken place. When master resets happen in regards to a disaster that takes place upon the planet, there are in that sense certain safeguards that must maintain the DNA appropriately so that humanity does not make the same mistake again in that way, looking at it collectively, so that there is no, shall we say, catastrophic or cataclysmic event. And so it was therefore decided after the disaster of Atlantis to restrict your particular forms of DNA from a 12 helix structure to a double helix structure. This was meant in regards to the idea of personalized restriction so that many of you could learn more about enacting together through the physical planes and working together more within the heart of the game itself, within the physical reality itself. But again, throughout all of the hundreds or even thousands of years of these interstellar skirmishes that were happening around your planet, beyond your planet, etc., rather than the idea of knowing that not one side could get higher than the other in regards to, shall we say, victory or retreat, there was a deal that was signed. And this is basically what has involved your moon. And that through the idea of what you would know as a 22 different extraterrestrial races are inhabited upon the moon. 
as well as several other different extraterrestrial races that are also observers upon the moon. Now, they have worked together the idea of a truce. This truce has, in that sense, been negotiated by many other particular forms of, shall we say, factors of third-party interventionalists. You would understand that one of these third-party interventionalists are the beings that you would know as the Andromedans. Now, it's not just the Andromedans themselves, but there are many other particular factors of the idea of neutral representatives that allowed all particular forms of civilizations who were in humanity's favor and those who were not in humanity's favor to actually come together and in that sense, shall we say, form a truce. And through that particular time, the truce upon the moon has never been violated. And that many of you in that sense that are starting to realize that the extraterrestrial presence is returning and that you are noticing that there is an increase of sightings and that you are noticing that there is an increase of other people coming forward that you commonly refer to as whistleblowers, you are now starting to understand that there is some type of grand experiment coming together here, that there is the idea of the cycle returning and feedbacking upon itself once again. And this would be what you would know as the return of the ancient beings. Many of the ancient beings that we are referring to can be found upon the idea of the hieroglyphs that you find within your ancient Egypt. You find beings that have faces of animals, such as the faces of alligators, the faces of dogs, the faces of avians. Yes. Now, again, understand that there has been a lot of communication throughout your form of collective consciousness, spiritual, together within the idea of your spiritual, new age, metaphysical, extraterrestrial community of certain forms of individuals that have come forward and stated that there are beings that you would know as the blue avians that are in that sense working together to help integrate these particular forms of spheres that are also helping to work together to create this alliance that is taking place. Adronis, is this true? Yes, of course it is. The whole idea is, that is the form that the blue avians themselves simply represent a form of energy, a simple form of image that is in recreational capacity pertaining to that of the reminder of the gods. It is a blueprint that is helping you to remember yourselves in those times of ancient Egypt, in those times of ancient Atlantis, in those times of ancient Sumeria, etc. They are simply taking this form because it is a reminder to you on an ancient level. Now, again, they are not the only ones responsible. There are many other forms of civilizations that are forming together a particular alliance that are helping many of you to move into this newer state of consciousness, shall we say, or rather in the way the return of consciousness that has moved into a form that is now at a greater height to where you are now starting to reach. Now, what is taking place upon your planet right now, as many of you are already aware, is what you would refer to as a third to fourth density integration. Now, this is basically still happening, but many of you are able to cross the threshold and you are still creating the idea of an experiment, a reality that exists in third density, but also exists within fourth density as well. Think of it in the idea of a bubble that exists in third density that is within another bubble that exists within fourth density. Now, basically what is eventually going to happen is that these two particular bubbles will merge, they will converge. And so it will be the idea of the integration of one particular density that will be referred to as quote unquote, the new fourth density. It is the idea that these particular forms of bubbles in that sense are creating an osmosis and that they are merging themselves together. Now, many of you could also refer to it in the idea of the earth splitting in the idea of a mitosis. That in that sense is particular true, but it is also representing that as the earth splits, you are now seeing the mitosis come together. What is basically separating is in that sense also coming together. And so therefore it can be paradoxical in that particular understanding. But basically what has happened is that there is a new density that has come together within this universe pertaining to the shift that has happened. And in that sense, this particular 13th density will now start to become the 12th density. And the idea of this third to fourth integration will now become the new fourth density. 
And that is basically what is taking place here. Again, it is very, very challenging for us to give you certain forms of analogies because anything like this has never been shared before and has never been done before. And so it is the idea not only of a galactic integration, but it is the idea of a universal dimensional density integration that is taking place as well. And that our information pertaining to this is very, very limited because we have never seen anything like this happen before within any other particular, shall we say, record that we can access. And so there is a great deal of change that is taking place upon your planet. And through the idea of the integration between the forms of the third and the fourth density, as they start to merge together, as they start to form together into a state of oneness, you will notice that this completion will happen fully in integration between the next 50 to 300 years. We thank you very much, Anish, for your question. We understand that, yes, there are certain areas upon your planet that are going through very, very rough times. We understand that the areas of your planet, shall we say, are going through great states of poverty and, in that sense, great states of changes. But again, it is the example of what you are noticing through that planet, that's through that area of your planet that serves such an extreme that others are noticing. Now understand that through the idea of extreme impoverishment, it will take time for that to correct. But the whole idea of realizing is that yes, there are certain people around you and again throughout the country that may be extremely impoverished. But this is where you are in that sense, noticing that hands are reaching out around you not just from people locally, but from people collectively. The understanding is that as you notice that impoverished countries are existing, what can you do to feel that you are transcending that impoverishment personally? What do you feel you can do to become the example of realizing that impoverishment is in that sense a state of being? And what you can do through that example to help bring forward the idea of transformation within your world. Because again, as you become the example, no matter how extreme the area on your planet is pertaining to impoverishment, as you become the example, when others in that sense see that particular example in like mind, you will notice that those forms of branched connections will shift and everybody in that sense are holding hands together. Now understand that there are many different forms of efforts taking place that will help to alleviate the idea of impoverishment. But if you're noticing that impoverishment is happening so much, you may want to look into the idea of the leaders of those particular countries because they are not doing what is meant to be done in regards to that aspect. And so again, this is eventually what's going to be noticed collectively. The leaders that have caused the idea of these impoverishments to happen will no longer become leaders. And in order for that to happen, there must be enough people-based initiative in order for that to change, in order for there to be an assistance that will grant the idea of welfare reaching a point to where impoverishment no longer happens. Now, this will not be something that will take place overnight. This needs to happen through the idea of the collective consciousness pertaining to your country. Understand the only reason that a country in that sense becomes impoverished is based upon collective karmic ties, is based on the idea of warfare, is based upon the idea of certain levels of suffering, is based upon the idea of certain forms of disasters that have been implemented. Now understand that there is a very important law universally for you to know. This is what's known as the law of equivalent exchange. In order for you to obtain something, something of equal value must be given in return. So understanding that if India itself represents this country in that sense to where a great deal of turmoil has taken place. Its people must reach a point to where they are shifting into a new level of consciousness, despite of them feeling that they are impoverished or not. When those lights start to come on through each individual, equivalent exchange will therefore bring about situations that will manifest based upon those governed collective feelings that will bring India into a grand new transformation not just India, but areas in Africa and many other different areas upon your planet as well. As these particular countries see these little lights starting to fuse <clears throat> by people realizing that no matter how, things, how bad things have gotten, I'm able to now bring myself into a state past impoverishment because impoverishment is a state of being. So if I'm able to look at becoming the example and seeing that, yes, I'm surrounded by impoverishment, but I decide to live, 
Now other people are able to get those examples as well. And now they are going to start lighting up as well. And now equivalent exchange is stating, well, these people are now becoming sovereign despite what surrounds them. And now events will start manifesting into your global consciousness and India and areas of Africa and any other areas in that sense will now start to move into a greater state of prosperity because the people are now seeing themselves living prosperously despite living impoverishedly. So again, this is basically what needs to happen in order for certain forms like that to take place. Because even though there are efforts that, yes, are attempting to help you financially and attempting to lead a, lead a helping hand, if there is too much reliance in regards to those relief efforts, then the idea is that the people themselves do not become impoverished or in that sense prospered past the idea of impoverished. So the idea is that impoverishment remains by you knowing that it still exists. <clears throat> and as long as you still feel that impoverishment exists through yourself and through the idea of the collective, rather than realizing, yes, I know that this is a situation here. I realize that this is an issue. So I'm going to transform myself and I'm going to become the example of no longer choosing to live in impoverishment, but being able to live together in prosperity. Now, how through my feelings, how through my actions, can I allow myself to feel that? That will be your call because you are a unique individual.